Bottom of the barrel, hey. bottom of the barrel, cause hey. the barrel is only hey. two small. Bottom of the barrel, 177. <laughs> this is Chris Ramsey. I'm Wes Barker, a.k.a. Tom Sawyer and Cuckleberry Finn. Uh, we got Green in the cut. Hey, say what's up, Green? Hey, what's up, Green? Who's Tom? I don't know. When I said it, I'm like, I kind of introduced yeah. Chris, then Wes. So yeah. if I say Cuckleberry Finn, am I? Because I went first. I think I fucked myself on yeah. that one. You're, you're the cuck. I'm Cuckleberry Finn. That's right. All right. I'll take it. I don't mind. Dude, Heck get, yeah. I've never tried cucking it out. Maybe it'd be all right. Anyways, welcome. I don't think so. Probably not. Right off the top. Dude, we're going to go hard today. <laughs> Looks like I'm it. I'm in it, man. Let's go. I know. I am, too. I'm excited way. to be here. Uh, as you know, it is a tradition here on Bottom of the Barrel. Uh, Green's lined uh, more beers up for us, and we're going to go through and we're going to rate them during the podcast. So we're switching them up. They were loggers last episode, last week. Now we're IPAs? Week, we're going with IPAs. I'm well, this fan. one, I mean, you say- They're all getting twos he, for me. He says that, <laughs> but this is a dark lager. This is a Czech dark lager called Communion. Then I fucked up and and, uh, and it's uh, yeah. Oh, it's a dark lager. Dark lager, man. Yeah. I'm really excited about this. One. I've been eyeing it up for uh, all all day. Five percenter. Give me some of that darkness. Right. Get that dark in me, dude. I like the dark beer. Shouty so gigs much. Uh, recently. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Between the last time we saw you, <laughs> had a couple a uh, <laughs> couple of fans show up to one of my one of my shows in Oklahoma. Oh, you said that. Yeah, no. they were unsubscribed fans. No, no, no. Our fans. Oh, our fans. Ew. Why is this? We the color clean. of rust and blood. We didn't clean it last time. It's fine. It looks like soda. Oh, from this? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Look at this bar, 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 uh, bar rouge. I was trying whatever. to figure out what that word is in English. It's terrifié. <laughs> th- Sounds like rusted. Oh, boys. This is my... For for a winter... It's not winter enough outside anymore, but for a winter beer on a ski slope with this bad boy, this makes me want to go skiing, but then yeah. tell my friends after one hour, I bail out. I don't ski anymore. I sneak off into the forest. I lie down on my skis. I, t- I sit out. I look over the mountains, and I drink one of these that I kept in my pocket. That's what makes me want to do. Okay. I'll tell you what. It's it, 8.5 out of 10. It is pretty good. Ski beer. Still tastes like blood. Mm-hmm. From it skiing. tastes skiing like what hard. it looks like. I'm glad I got one too. I want to taste this. It tastes like metal. It's so good. If you like, like imagine this. All right, here's what I get when I when I when I taste this. I'm getting your plane has crashed in the Andes. <laughs> uh, there is a you've been here for what feels like weeks, right? But you can't move. You're stuck under the snow, mm-hmm. and there is this one pipe. Right, that the melting, <laughs> that the melting snow is leaking into, and it is rusty, and is you don't know what it's made of, but that's the only thing keeping you alive. Yeah, and that taste, you can't tell. Is it the rust? Am I tasting the taste of my own blood? Yes, sir. That's, that's what I. That is good. You find out later that that pipe has been running through a dead body up there, and so it is a little <laughs> bit of blood. That's nice. That's good. I'm into this. It's just oh, I like it. It's just another guy pissing in a pipe. And you're like, oh no. <laughs> yeah, I'm not a fan. It doesn't You uh, fucking bought it. Dude. Yeah. We, yeah. We, we want me to tell you. We gotta try. We gotta try. <laughs> uh where I, does the money come for these? <laughs> I give it uh I give it a five. It's coming out of your pocket. Oh, okay. Give it a five. Eight point five. Yeah. Well, actually he owes me ten bucks. Hey. So, yeah. We just played we just gambled. Um <laughs> no, we uh I invented a game. Yeah. And we played it, and it works. Uh, one day you're going to have it all the way done. It's really close, man. It's a fucking great game. It's pretty good. It's a great fucking game. We played three times in a row without hesitation. Yeah. Wanted to play. Dude, Look forward to playing there again. Are, there are heartbreaks to be had. There's yeah. cheering and victory. Yeah. It's exciting. Pretty cool to uh, to be able to, like, because, like, it's like a puzzle making a game, I found out. Yeah. Where you make one thing, then that thing has repercussions, right? There's There's... Yeah, there's an action, so there's reaction. So then you have to account for the reaction somehow within yeah. the rules, and then you got to add so that all the rules are all balanced and the game feels balanced. And that's always like the tough part. Yeah. But like, you don't want to also add too much to a game so it becomes silly and weird. You don't want to add too little to where you're not having any real fun. So it's like it, it is interesting to hit that mark. And this one's kind of fun. It's simple too. Yeah. Yeah. It's like the Jeremy. Hots, Jeremy Hots, the comedian, the guy that's like, oh, I know Kenny Hots. Yeah, th- th- this is an old, old school comic. Anyway, he has a joke about if you ever play the game Sorry, you ever play right. that game? It's a game yeah. so bad it apologizes to you. <laughs> <laughs> 
But like, you know, if if you fuck up, if you fuck up making a game, it's like you said, it's either gonna be super overpowered and that's no yeah. fun, or it's just tedious. That's right. It's got to have enough. Like, if you're behind, you can't be discouraged. There might, there's got to still be a chance. If you're ahead, there's got to be a way for you to fall. That's right. Like, it's so. And this game has it all, man. I'm fucking. Yeah. I was screaming. Yeah, you were. I was moaning. It was pretty good. And I was like, you know, if we put money on the line, this game would be pretty intense. And we did that just for fun. We're like ten bucks. And yeah. We're like, damn. Like, which was like, it was a lot because that's because you can win it all. Fifteen percent of yeah, you know, my income. So that's right on this podcast. That's right. That is we'd have to podcast twice. Yep. For that. Yep. <laughs> Speaking of which. Join us on the Patreon or Where we podcast twice. Or, oh, yeah, watch the podcast twice mm -hmm. or YouTube membership. Get those extra sexy emojis all in one clever spot for you. Yeah, Come dude. hang out. I think it's cool. I like it. What are you? Um, Don't your chats go to the top? What have you been working on? Anything, uh, anything you're trying out you're working on? I got a roast, by the way. I had a roast last, last week. I guess it would be whatever. Well, but uh, I'm still getting ready for that. I, I've been trying. Um, I'm trying to come up with a new closer. So like, cause I put out my special and I posted outside of my special, I posted the similar trick of me doing the reverse straight jacket escape Yeah, everywhere. And it's like on Facebook and stuff and, and Instagram, it's like yeah. millions of views. Can't perform anymore. It's one of those things that it's not a magic trick. It's a stunt and it's a cool thing to watch like juggling. Yeah. So I can absolutely still do it. Yeah. But you don't want to go on tour now and close with a thing that people might have seen. Right. I can still do it and I'll still do it at like corporate events. I it's see. super chill. Yeah. Um, but like when I'm going out, I'm like looking for another real big magic piece closer mm. that's like plays big. Well, it's portable. That's, that's right. the problem, right? Yep. Like fuck. No, those are those are this is a great conversation to have, dude. I love having these conversations with you too. It's like how do you how do you, yeah? How do you come up with something yeah. that you know you don't want to you don't want it to burden your life? Yeah. For me, a lot of what burdens me during performance is if I have to use any electronics. Oh, dude, for sure. I do not like relying on it because the one time it doesn't work, you have no out. No. With electronics, the 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 things that electronics allow you to do are so fucking impossible. Yeah. That if you end up not doing them, you just you look like it's. There's no out. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. I, uh, <laughs> whereas like if you're doing something funny and elaborate, well, they're laughing if they're not being fooled or they're fooled if they're not laughing. And it's Dude, like, I tried to even do a, a beer bar bet the other day on stage and I spilled it on myself. Oh. So I was like, whoa, we'll do it again. I grabbed another beer and started doing it again. And then I fucking spilled it on myself twice in a row on stage. At this point, I'm soaking wet. Uh, in beer and the audience <laughs> is utter they're dying laughing and they're utterly convinced that this is oh this is the thing he does right there's no world where they think that i fucked up twice i just look like i meant like not that i meant to but like it's just so funny like oh wow i can't believe he comes out here and just makes a fool on this impossible thing like it was so on purpose to them was the only thing he did and then I moved on. I'm just soaking, and I carried on. Started. Doing, I had an hour long oh. show to do. This oh, I in. see. I thought that was the only bit, and I was like, oh no. <laughs> and if that's the only bit, I was like, that would have that would have been fine. This isn't this isn't holding, eh? Yeah. Hold on. All right. Do you use your farm strength? Nay. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's what they call me, Cucklebird Fit. No, okay. Uh, he was a farmer, wasn't he? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, dude, it's uh, so, anyways, I like that because it's low tech. Um, but like, and the out there is just silliness, right? But I've set up that character. But if I'm doing something like some crazy fucking powerful thing, like you're saying, and then it falls apart, it's not funny. It's not beer on your face. It's dead silence, and the thing never happened. Well, let's give, let's give our audience a glimpse into us brainstorming. Well, I'll tell you, I was talking the other night, uh, on the phone at a Zoom call with uh, Jonathan. Ross. Good, goodwill, Goodwin. Yeah, Goodman, Good. The guy, Goodwin. That, the guy that got hit with the Gladwin. The guy that broke himself on America's Got Talent with the two cars. Oh right, Goodwin, I think. Goodwin, yeah, yeah. And uh, he, if you look him up, he's done so many incredible things. And he was talking to me about. He, he's like, maybe you gotta up it, man. Because I was like, well, I need, I, I need ideas that I can take on tour that are really simple, like closers. And he's like, maybe the idea of performing out of a, one fucking suitcase is not where you should go. Maybe you should. Not not going high tech, but going like high, you know, more elaborate sort of danger stunt type thing. I don't disagree with that. It because he's like he's like production value is it does exist for a reason, 
and he was making pretty good points about it. I mean, it, practically, it's very hard for but me. But he's do. also not doing comedy. That's, yeah. So there's the difference there. It's like, what I think what we're aiming to try to do it might not be the best, you know, of both worlds, but definitely, yeah, the idea is to play small enough to where it's not big, right? It's like play small, play big enough to where it's not considered playing big. And I think that's like the nice, whether it's balloons on stage right. or, you know, a, a spectator or a crossbow and yeah. a target. Those are like as big Medium as... Medium size, still practical to bring around. Exactly. I think anything like a lot. bigger than that yeah. um, is cool, can be cool, uh, but not if you're doing the type of shows you're doing. I think if that's like more like, okay, we're doing a theater show, one theater show, yeah. and we're getting ready, we're going to do this like crazy fucking trick at the end. Yeah. But to travel with something like that... That's why for a while there I was like, Sword, phone book, throw it in the air. Looks yeah. big. Oh, uh, exactly. It looks newspaper. Big. We got newspaper everywhere, and we got a blowdart gun. He's shooting at this whiteboard I bought yep. at the dollar store. Like it crosses the stage. Lots of stuff. Chaos. It feels bigger. That's why I like the the t shirt cannon. T shirt cannon. Yeah. Because it's like it's such a fun thing that yeah. you can like shoot and it's safe and yeah. You know, it plays bigger than it is. It makes a big sound. Too. Wakes up the back of the theater. They're yeah. like, oh fuck, this might come back here. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> and it will. Yeah. Um, That's true. What are some other What are some other things that play big like that? Well, oh, I had yeah. the boomerang for a while. I, I I got a good boomerang trick. I never got a great boomerang. I see trick. balloons. Balloons are good. Anything. Boomerang trick's fun. Yeah, I gotta figure that out better. Something really better. Like this beer. I'm giving it a four. Give it a four instead. Yeah. Every time I take a sip, it's going down. Every time I take a sip, I get more excited. Really? You're stealing my points. I don't like it. Yeah. What are some other uh, other things that play big? Um, I like how Eric and his show, not to give anything away, but the the bong the bong bit's pretty funny. Yeah, it's kind of he only uses it for the the sight gag. Too, yeah, right. Yeah, which is fun. Yeah, yeah, he, and his, his show feels like he feels like he's always in the. But that's the thing; he's always in the right size theater for that show. He's in like 150 seats. Yeah, and I'm like trying to do these 500, 700 seaters. Yeah, it's it's weirder. Yeah, he's definitely got like more production value uh, because of obviously the, the audio. Alex is on the audio. Yeah, doing audio and like when you're just doing shows that small, yeah, it it's so perfect. And that's one of the arguments for jack your ticket price up and make the show smaller. And I, I maybe that's another move too is just stop doing bigger theaters and hauling ass to sell 500 tickets yeah. and just sell 130 seats in a smaller room for more money. Maybe there's that. Right, and then you could then it's tighter in there, so you can make more production value out of literally less big props. Yeah, but then do you cap out mm -hmm. at uh, the size of the stage that you're allowed to perform on? Probably. You know what I mean? Yeah, maybe. But like, not in terms of like, I'm not talking arenas or anything. But I'm no. saying, do you cap out in terms of like, you know, playing a 2,000 seat theater? Yeah, is a nice uh, achievement for anyone. But yeah, you got to have big enough magic. Yeah. You know, or just, I guess, the jokes that carry, but... Like, when I saw Piff live, he had to have camera following him production That's right. up here. And he's still got a lot of big sparkly props and stuff, but it Things needs... like banners falling. Yeah. And, and I haven't seen Wilma's new show. I wonder what he's up to. He might he might have another, also a camera. It feels yeah. like that's where people go, is they go, fuck it, one camera guy and direct feed to this huge screen. Yeah. And now, all of a sudden, all of that, uh, you get all of that. You, you can play close-up stuff. Yeah, cl close-up stuff and... Um, backgrounds are changing every trick and stuff. You're getting more just visuals in the back, yeah. even like that's true. You know, maybe that because on the cruise ships they do that all the time. When you change a trick over to a new trick, mm -hmm. they're like now it's going black and dark with, and there's like a old Houdini style stuff in the back. And then right. you do a comedy bit, and now it's like circus mm -hmm. tent, and they're just changing it behind you for these different tricks. Fair. And it matters. It does. I yeah. hate that it matters. It changes your experience. Yeah, the audience like, like, oh wow, movie. this is a fun. Well, yep. of course. And that's not that's something I don't have enough of in my show. And it drives the crew people nuts. I think sound really accomplishes that in a lot of ways. True. Uh, especially if you can do it yourself, which you can 100% do. Yeah. You have your your order of playlist. Yeah. Every time you hit the button, it's going to play the next sound. Yeah. And if you want to go back, hit the button twice or yeah. whatever it is, right? And then just uh, just have that rigged up. Um, yeah. You know, true. There are ways to play on sound like that too, like even for gags and stuff. But it's, it's hard not to make it your show yeah uh it's hard not because I, I think the second you start 
using it too much, it starts to become a little hooky. Like Eric used it a lot. Yeah. And like I it was it was fun. It was funny. Yeah. But, but for your own preference, you're like, well, oh, it, a little bit too much. It I feel like it becomes a certain type of show. Yeah. Where I don't necessarily know that that's the type of show that I want to do. Yeah. Yeah. If that that's just, I feel like everyone has to really be honest about their own personal yeah. take on that. Because I get it, but I'm like, I don't know, man. If 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 that was the say, if that always helped, then more stand up comedians would do what Bo Burnham does, mm-hmm. right? Right. Like, but yeah, I also don't want it to be that either. You know? Yeah. Like, so I don't know. It's hard to say. Yeah, using it, I would, I would argue using one sound cue, yeah, for a whole show for a moment can be hilarious. Yeah. That's like farting in the theater. Yeah. Versus a guy heckling and then farting. <laughs> you <laughs> right. know, you know what I mean? The guy keeps farting. Yeah. Right. yeah. The guy just keeps like it's funny <laughs> Dude, the first time. You go. Um yeah, I'm yeah, he's just shitting his pants back there. <laughs> yeah. Uh yeah, I think I think I think if you play it right, and I've always been a fan of like adding a fiction, inserting a crazy amount of fiction into a non fictional setting, into yeah. like a realistic setting, and then just a a blast of fiction. Yeah. versus having everything be a fiction and then uh, but it's also real you know yeah. just kind of no keeping it real and then all of a sudden poof, like yeah. this intense like thing happens and then it stops and you're back in reality yeah and i think like with sound you could do that a lot yeah have like some fucking han zimmer you know at one yeah. point like for no reason like maybe you look at them and you're just like Bwah. that's fun yeah and then just goes right back to normal or something, whatever that is, or whether it's like you say something, but you say it in like a demonic voice all of a sudden. Yeah, it's like, it got a huge uh, yeah, reverb on it. Yeah, exactly. And then it's just like, people are like, what the fuck? And you go right back and you never address it. You never go back to it. Yeah. Something like that. You had that fun. idea with the with the, the light book you have too, right? Yeah. For no reason, just, you know. Exactly, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That's fun. I, I, I used to break the, no, I guess break the fourth wall. I used to use people from the audience all the time they were stooges, like obvious stooges. Sometimes, like I pick a guy up and be like, "What the fuck? That's the wrong." And, you know, you got right. You got uh, what is it? A uh, Calgary Flames jersey on, and, and then I like, turn around and you know, Kayla Marley dress code him. Yeah, turn around and like, right. like Vancouver Canucks says that's where we're Canucks uh, and put it back. I thought it was so obvious that these are stooges. Yeah, but it just ruined people. People were like. They would like there'd be murmurs of like that guy was probably in on it. Oh yeah, and I'm like, and then, yeah, obviously. Yeah, and then it's gross. but they're like, but they think I think I'm fooling them. Oh, I I didn't I didn't show me bring girl up, uh, strip her down, put her in the box, kind of thing. You know, right? Thing. Everyone's like, and like they're so confused. Is she in on it? I'm like, it's so obvious to me, yeah. but I'm not making it obvious enough. So yeah. I don't know because that was kind of fun to me. Those were adding layers of of like our. Are we in this fiction or not? I wanted mm. it to be like when someone goes on stage, you know, is it are they part of the show or not part of the yeah. show? And I thought it would be revealing itself, but I think it'd be more obvious than I that. I think you do have to be more obvious. Sucks. Yeah, because you're gonna have people all over that spectrum. Mm-hmm. Believing, not believing, all over. Everybody has a different everyone. That's the thing. It's so different. You think about audiences in terms of the variation, the variance of types of audiences that magicians have compared to like other art forms like music or comedy or yeah uh you can you go to a magic audience it's all types of people sure who all have a different memory of magic and who are all expecting a different type of magic and who all have a different idea of where magic comes from or what who can be a magician it's so vast if whereas a music we're like yeah we bop our heads music makes a beat music is instruments it sounds in a symphony it's you know, we understand that. And like comedy is like, ha 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 ha, you laugh. Yeah. But magic, like watching magic, there's people watching it from perspectives of, of deep rooted religion, from perspectives of, yeah. uh, of, of maybe seeing something unexplainable before and this is confirming it. Uh, other people, like it's, it's such a wild spectrum compared to any other art form in terms yeah. of who's consuming it and how they're consuming it because it's, different for everybody it really is different for everybody Everybody has a different experience with magic you yeah. show people magic they're going to react a certain way uh similarly but what got them to react what compelled them to react and a lot of times is very different is like oh because like you thought it was real mm-hmm. for a second yeah. or or you're you got scared or you know you hate it or whatever it is and i think some people will judge their experience of a, a magician based on 
what their expectation was going in, right? Like my friend Rob sent right. some, someone to my show and I hit him up after and I'm like, hey, how'd your buddy like my show? And he's like, yeah, I wasn't sure if I was going to tell you or not. I was like, you can tell me, I don't care. Wow. And he's like, he's like, yeah, he's, and he's like, this is a direct quote. Uh, eh, he was so funny. I, it was, not for me. Like I just, because this kid wanted, uh, that kid, Wanna this guy magic. wanted to go there and feel like he was eight years old again yep. and being blown away by this magical, mystical wonder. And I get wanting to go for that experience. Yeah, don't we all? Right? Yeah, exactly. Right? <laughs> no, but I, I get why you'd want that experience. Yep. And I'm like, oh yeah, no, that's not what you bought tickets to. Yeah. Right? But I, so he, for him, he's like, yeah, no, nah, I'm not, I wouldn't pay to see him again, is what he said. Yeah. And then it's like, oh, okay, because that's what you wanted. Yeah. But you can't please everybody. No. So you have to just sort of stay in your lane. Well, there are no lanes of magic according to everyone except magicians. That's part of the problem, is yeah. it? They're like, whatever you think a magic show is, that's what you expect going in. There's yeah. no genres. No, exactly. Just give me the fucking. Well, what they're expecting is the same thing. Right. But what they're getting is very different. Right. Every time. Right. Because their expectations are all this one thing or whatever it is or these. But what they're, what they're experiencing from that is going to be vastly different from what they thought. Yeah. Is like, there's all sorts of, I mean, that's just a weird thing. Like, when we we did a show in Austin, like, I remember, because I know when it's a magic audience and I know when it's a comedy audience. Sure. And when it's a magic audience, they don't like the comedy as much, uh, or if at all, some mm -hmm. of them. Mm -hmm. uh, but in comedy, they enjoy the magic. Sure. They like the jokes, right? But the magic's cool too. It's a pleasant. It might be a pleasant surprise. Yeah. Oh, look at that. Yeah, but but uh, comedy crowds don't all like uh, magic crowds. Don't all like comedy. Sure. Uh, and, and we were in Austin. We, we you know, and I was like liking liking to laugh and liking comedy are two separate things. Yeah, because <laughs> Austin's rich in comedy. <laughs> yeah. And then uh, Mike Eaton, our buddy, went on who kills normally <laughs> kill, and he was and it was like, oh, he's kind of eating shit, and I was like, yeah. Fuck. and I get out there, and I ate shit too. Yeah. Glad, yeah, but then Shitty corporate old West picked it up and fucking oh, smashed it. I was it, in the back. I'm like, I'm like, I'm doing the full corporate set tonight. Oh, baby. yeah, you knew exactly <laughs> where to go, dude. Your was professionalism like, was shining through that like, night. I'm not gonna do any of the stuff I want to do. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> You're like, let me just stick to good old things, and yeah, popped off. Obviously, that's the fun thing about West. West can do a daycare, <laughs> and then he can perform a corporate, and then a late bar set. Yeah. And then an early morning set at an old folks' home. And you, you can just <laughs> do all of that yeah. uh, with the same tricks. Most of the same tricks. <laughs> yeah. And it was just different premises. Yeah. Whereas in the morning, he's like, oh, I'm going to, uh, oh, there's a balloon. Look how silly. I'm a clown. At night, he's like, there's a giant green cock. <laughs> yeah, and that one, I don't even use the balloon. Yeah. It's just a giant green cock. <laughs> yeah. Bruce? <laughs> of course. Well, you know, because uh, Bruce Banner as well. Right. You always made that joke, Bruce. Oh. Because you, you, in your show, you say yeah, the right. guy's name is Bruce. Never you go, of course. But then when it's green, I'm like, Bruce Banner. I confused people the other day because I have another story where there's a guy in the story named Mitch. And I'm t I, I mentioned Mitch four times in this one story. And it confused the shit out of the audience because the opening act's name's Mitch in this in the oh, other show. Oh, oh. Uh, Mitch Burroughs, funny as fuck. Go look up Mitch Burroughs, funny as fuck. Uh, he's a he's a comedy store guy that's moving to he's in Texas now uh, like like all the all those guys did he's fucking so funny but uh, it was it was wild because I didn't register to me and they're like why did you keep talking about Mitch like that and I'm like because they all that's another thing with magic audiences especially I don't know maybe with co comedy audiences but they assume the story I'm telling them is not a true story hmm. so like they assume I made the story up always. So like when they hear me use they're like why do you why are you talk like the opening oh year? that makes sense though because but I'm like I didn't well I'm not, that's just how the story that's just how the guy, well, that's the guy's name yeah and they're like yeah I, oh it's confusing because I and I'm like what's well, a real story they're like it's a real story <laughs> I'm like yeah because in magic people steal other people's shit all the time I guess so it's easy for you to think that you know a magician yeah. it feel what he's doing feels like an act feels like a right but when it, I think. It's hard because I'm sure a lot of people out there think everything some comedians say is a lie, but then er some comedians lie all the time. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. How do you feel about that? Comedians lying? Yeah. Like, Go what's his name? Giver. Who was it that was caught? Oh, I don't know. Actually, um, I actually don't know what you're about to say. Hassan? Oh, yeah. Oh, lying and pretending it was real? Yeah. Well, he. he oh, oh, that's wild. Well, because, like, the parts that he lied were, like, to gain th sympathy. Yeah. You gotta lie about the funny part, I think. 
I, I think you can exaggerate. Yeah, like if the guy's six foot and you want to tell that he's six five, sure. Yeah. I, I I think that's okay. Or if you or what I do is I'll have two separate nights mm-hmm. and neither one of them is standalone very good. Yeah, like they're both good, but and like, you'll mush them up into so one. So I'm like I'm like okay. Uh, the night I climbed into that building, uh, into the you know bar, is also the night that I woke up naked in the hostel. I right. put them together. They're separate nights. They have right. two days apart. But fuck it, they're one yeah. day now because it's way more cohesive. That's right. And I'm like, that's that's good. I think that's fine because the stories. I'm just telling you the better version of yeah. what you want to hear. But like, it's what you want to hear. All the pieces are 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 true. But it isn't. Uh, but for like being like uh, the, uh, lying about maybe racism or whatever. Yeah, exactly. or whatever. I can't remember what his was exactly. Yeah. Then that's like that's wild. That's a little below the belt, I think, for every for anyone. Yeah, yeah, I'd feel weird about that. I don't know. Like, because there there are some that are so silly that you know they're lying, which is fine. Yeah, and that you're not you're not lying, and that's like that's just like in magic. If you're true to your fiction, then you're not lying. Oh right. So you got to be true to your fiction. If, yeah. if for, so, if you're if you're out there and Mitch Hedberging it up, you know what I mean, and and. Fucking, I don't know all the, all the stuff he says, right? But like, yeah. he's a character. He's he's that guy. So you're like, oh, as long as he's true to that guy, to who he is, I yeah. don't feel like he's lying. I feel like he's putting on a show, and it's fun. But as soon as you start to incorporate it with reality, yeah, then you're lying. Like I think if I found out that John Mulaney, his last special, if I found out that he didn't have a cocaine problem and didn't go to rehab, yeah, I'd be like, what the fuck? Oh yeah, because it only feels good. When you feel like someone's burying their soul, some kind of comedy only works if you feel like you're seeing the most honest thing anyone's mm-hmm. ever said. Like, holy shit, I can't believe you admitted to that. That feels good and funny. And yeah. if you find out later that they weren't at all, yeah, shitty. that would be weird. Also, it sets up for a nice contrast. That's uh, one of the things that you Chappelle is really good at. I think Louis C.K. is really good at is creating um, a contrast because I think the more contrast you have with jokes or with magic yeah uh, if you can create a natural contrast um, where their emotions are taken from you know sympathetic or caring or loving or inspired or nostalgic or whatever and then bring them back to like something crass or or yeah, you yeah, know, yeah. hit him, hit him from another angle. That contrast is going to be very big, and then your reaction is usually really big to that because you're also this creates a tension down here. Yeah. So you're creating this tension, right, by being down here, but also reassuring them, and then all of a sudden you come up with this, and now this tension is just broken. You've you you've kind of released sure. the tension. It's okay to laugh, and like you get a bigger reaction. With magic, it's like that too. But yeah, I was say how, yeah, I was gonna say applying that to tricks is hard sometimes, but only just because we, we don't try hard enough. Well, you can, you can, yeah, but you can apply it in in, in a range of impossibility. Sure, if you want, right? In, right. If you want to look at it like method, that's, I guess wise. that's probably why I instinctively like to add gags because it it flips it around a little bit. Maybe it breaks it breaks the awkwardness. Yeah, yeah. Or well, and like the consi- sometimes I find um, really polished magic shows too consistent. Mm-hmm. Right, where you're like, yeah, we. We know you're gonna. We're going. We know you're gonna get the thing right. right. Yeah. How do you? Yeah. How do you fight that? Yeah. Also, doing something really impossible. You know, something yeah. crazy impossible, and then right after you're done, most of them will just go. Anyways, that was weird. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah. And you're like, why'd you do that? Yeah. Fuck. Why'd you break it? <laughs> yeah. You were right there. You were being true to your fiction. You weren't lying. And now by saying that, you're lying about what just happened. Yeah. Well, the whole time, well, that was an act. The person you are now is not the person who just did that miracle. Yeah. Because you were a different person then. You were like reading this mi- somebody's mind or whatever it was. You're like, that was weird, right? And then we, now we know that was an act. Now you're lying. Yeah. So as long as you're true to your fiction, we all appreciate it. We like it. Like, stay there. Yeah. And that, I think that's that's the reason why I like not making fiction during uh, performances at all. That that way you can just insert the fiction, and you're not lying at all in that case. Mm. You know, you're not uh, you're not going back and forth and like that I makes don't know. sense. You know, it always jumps out at me, and I don't care. Out him on this, I don't give a fuck. Uh, Alex Boyer, I never watch his show, right? But like he posts sometimes, and I'll see him uh, with his fucking leopard skin jacket on, fucking rock star, whatever he thinks, right? Music, 
yeah, right. And then next thing I know, he's got a red solo cup over his head yeah. with someone on stage and yeah. doing the cup of water trick. And I'm like, where does that enter into? Where does this red solo cup and and cute little trick enter into that guy That's right. at all? Yeah, leave the red solo so cups to fit. me. Yeah. Or whatever, you know yeah. what I mean? Like that belongs over here, not yeah. over there. Like that's a weird. I agree with that. And like that's so to me, like I'm like he has a character, whether he knows it or not, that is he's committed to, and then every now and then he jumps way out of it with something with you know maybe 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 that's a good example of that. Yep, I def I definitely agree with that. I think uh, you know in, in instead of solo cups. You know, what are you, yeah. aren't be, you using like uh, <laughs> goblets yeah, or something? Exactly. Yeah, I didn't think that. <laughs> Stainless goblets with skulls on them. <laughs> skulls would be great. Empty yeah, skulls. Empty skulls. <laughs> yeah. You know? Exactly. Tommy Lee's butt plugs, whatever it is. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, fuck. Yeah, use diaphragms. Time for beer number two. I'm still trying not to drink beer number one. I don't want this anymore. Don't drink, drink it. Stand over here. I can uh, clean out your mug if you want. Oh. <laughs> this is oh, I should read this one because it's in French so I can do it perfectly I put the shirt on it's too small for me La Valanche I don't like it it's sticking oh, to my body La Valanche it's because your pecs are so big La yeah. Avalanche what is it? what color? oh it's clear nice I like that I like clear beer <laughs> piss color not blood color yeah thanks bro I like um. Fucking give a toenail on the coffee table. <laughs> Where? It's it a random. Be. It might be. A, it's a fucking toenail on the coffee table. I was gonna put it in the coffee machine. <laughs> <laughs> I do like the brainstorming though. Yeah, it's effective. I love thinking about stuff. <laughs> Things and stuff. I do. I really enjoy thinking. All what right. do you think? So dogs must not be thinking. They're sitting on the fucking couch, just staring. Uh, it's different. I know. What? Like, how the fuck? What do you? When you're around or talking to them, they you, they look like they're all animated and shit. Yeah. They're sleeping because they're sleeping. But when they're just sitting on the couch for hours, like I couldn't do that unless I was watching something, pondering yeah. something. They're just staring at the wall. Unless you're broken. Oh, you got to beat them down. Well, I don't think you need to. I think you just need to trap them in your house for long enough, and then eventually they give up and they're like they fall asleep all day. <laughs> um, <laughs> right. That's how I feel. Yeah. But uh, I I have to I don't know who said this, but I often wonder um, when you see a dog walking and then stop and then decides to go that way. Yeah. What what's the dog thinking <laughs> yeah. to like oh, maybe I'm hungry or like what's the dog thinking that made him turn that way? Yeah. And go lay down there. Yeah. Like what? what you know, it's got to be thoughts. It's, it's got to be coherent. Like I decide to go here, not just random, right? Yeah. So. That's interesting to think about, and they have a different reality. They're living a vastly different. Reality. I went to I went on the ground the other day. I was with my dog and just like kind of and you know you're down there and you're like this is such a wild way to see the world. Yeah. When everything was built for people. Yeah. You're everything eight, looks eight so, inches off the ground. It's just sticks and legs and like fucking things. On there. <laughs> like that's all it is. It's things that can crush you and like it's yeah. it's a weird reality that they have compared to ours. Yeah. Yeah, reality is uh we get into like pretty deep conversations at like lunchtime and stuff usually here <laughs> about like all this shit, but it is fucked up to think that everyone hates the job so much to start talking about killing themselves. Yeah, but like what would it be like <laughs> yeah. to not be here? <laughs> yeah. Just thinking about different the, like you don't even need to think of interdimensional beings or anything like that. Think about on this planet how many different types of realities exist. Yeah. That are so vastly different they might as well be from another dimension. Yeah. Seeing the world the way an octopus sees the world. They say most fish don't even know there's land. Like they don't even know. Yeah. A worm, uh, you know, a house cat or, or a. Yeah, worms literally live in the dirt. Yeah. Or a mole. Yeah. There's just, you know. Oh, a light. Fuck that. Yeah. Or a bug or a cocoon, like a larva going. Like, I mean, there's so many different ways to like experience life. And it's all vastly unimaginable like it's just like you can't even fathom yeah how something else can exist all we have we can just relate it to our experience yeah we can't be like i don't i don't know what this dog is going through no idea no could not even fathom 
Yeah, it's nothing, there's nothing that it's like to be that. I know what it would be like to be a human trapped in a dog's body. Exactly. I panic. I'd right. be like, whoa, I can't talk to anyone. Yeah. But like, I don't know what it's like to be a dog in a dog's body. Right. Oof. <laughs> yeah. Are you yeah. just a dumb human? Are you like, you know? Yeah. <laughs> I feel like they don't plan ahead a lot. I feel like they, they kind of were on yeah. the same page as them on short-term stuff. Like, I'm hungry. I'm tired. I'm thirsty. Mm -hmm. That looks fun. But like not, what am I going to do tomorrow? No memory. Yeah, no memory and no planning. <coughs> well, yeah. it's, it's crazy how like humans are like the only being on this planet that like cu like accumulates knowledge and passes it down. Every other animal, like they have a, they have offspring or whatever. They teach it what they sort of know and then it resets every time. Humans, we've piled yeah. on. That's how we got to where we are. So somehow we're like taking generationally, not just yeah. one, not just getting, they just go to, you know, it's really yeah. weird. It's really, I don't know how to it's describe true. it. Yeah. Like an octopus only lives for like two years or, yeah, or, or it, how long? Uh, two years. Sure. And then they have to pass all their knowledge in two years. Yeah. And if they could pass it, they would be like more intelligent than we are. Well, that's just it. Like if, if they could be like the other octopus, like your grandfather's grandfather's grandfather, you know, did this. So we're going to start there and we're yeah. going to add to that. They don't do that. They just true. like, whatever the first thing is. It's got to be, I don't know. It's got to be. It's interesting to think about. Yeah. I don't know how that works. Huh? Fuck if yeah. you guys know, yeah. uh, write us. Let yeah. us know in the comments. Send it to the North Pole. Address it to Santa. Right? How do you like this beer? On a scale of one to five. It's out of ten. Was this the Avalanche? Yeah. I don't like this one. I want my rust back, my rusty blood. This one Give me tastes that dark lager, baby. This one kind of tastes metallic as well. <laughs> I think maybe you're drinking out of a metal cup. This one tastes <laughs> like a. This one tastes like a stiletto factory in Italy, though. Mm -hmm. Which is kind of nice metal. Yeah, it's the metal you like because it's rustic Italian metal. That's okay. In the town of Stiletto, <laughs> there's an old man making stilettos, Giuseppe Stiletto. Still makes them to this day. Didn't like high heels, hated short women. Yeah, and he's drinking like a beer that tastes nothing. <laughs> That's great. And it's just licking his blade, having sips. Yeah, this yeah, this reminds me of like I've been invited over to someone's house and I've already had a lot of beers and they've handed me one and I just can't taste it anymore. I don't care. I don't really want it. <laughs> yeah. I just started drinking it because it was it's handed good. to me. It's true. Sitting there I being like, it. hope he tells me a funny story. Oh, racist again. Yeah. Right? Like, cool, cool. Yeah, like, this is my last one. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> this tastes like my last beer of the night. Uh, well, got to go <laughs> pretty that's soon. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's my rating. Perfect. Out of 10? Stiletto. Yeah, solid <laughs> one and a half stilettos. Yeah, that's right down the middle. This is a this is a, this is is a a sixer again. Five and a half. Four point. No, I mean, 3.9. I like it even less than the last one. Not a big fan of the IPAs. I don't know why people are fans of the IPAs. I don't think this IPA. is an IPA. It definitely is an IPA. That one, the, those two last ones should be IPAs. The, the one was a dark lager for sure, and it's the first IPA one. Yeah. is so small, so I don't think it was. I don't know. It's an IPA. You think? It's definitely an IPA. I think that's is. is it? It must be. Yeah. Oh, okay. Well, I love IPAs generally, so I don't know. They give you man boobs, though. That's why I got man boobs. That's what I got, too. That's what I've heard. Yeah, that shirt really did get you. Go with the man boobs. Mm-hmm. It's okay. Can you bounce them? Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> nice. Yeah. Learned that from Arnold Schwarzenegger. Nice. In Pumping Iron? In Pumping Iron. Pumping Iron! That was a fucking... I watched that for the first time. You hadn't watched that? I've never seen Pumping Iron. Holy shit, I've probably seen it 30 times when yeah. I was younger. I've watched it oh. on YouTube. It's for free on YouTube. Or I rented it or whatever it was. It's but crazy good. It's super good. Because it was like one of the earliest documentary style videos that yeah. showed vulnerability. Yeah. Uh, it, it showed behind the scenes what they're going through. But it also, there was a lot of drama that was like hyped up for it. And yeah. kind of. Yeah, they, they, they fabricated of, some. Yeah. You know, I watched a whole documentary afterwards. About that. Yeah. 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 Which I didn't watch for decades after I saw it the first time. So I was already all the way in. I bought into all of that when I was younger. Yeah. But Lou Ferrigno. Yeah, like, all of it. Poor guy. And the the uh Arnold's such a dick. Well, he's, a, he's like Jordan smack talking. 
Oh yeah, he's Hugely. like Michael Jordan in his prime, smack but he, talking. You know, he was on five wins. Look at you with your little arms. Yeah, it's like uh, yeah. I get all the women too, and it's like he's like <laughs> just over the top. Uh, milk is for babies. I drink beer. Yeah, <laughs> he's so funny. Yeah, he was saying some wild shit too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's like you know the wolf on the top of the mountain whatever. that's right some weird shit oh like yeah that. he's like uh, who's hungry or the wolf he's like yeah but when i want something to eat it's right there <laughs> it's great <laughs> yeah. i loved every bit of that i saw so many times i thought it was great but yeah i mean that was one of the first docs that, that i was aware of that like was following camera crew follow for like yeah. a long time mm -hmm. not knowing the outcome that's right maybe you're gonna lose maybe you're gonna watch the champ lose yeah really so great and people latched on right away to that genre yeah it was cool. That one guy got fucked too. The guy with the uh, one guy had like a weird mullet. Oh yeah, Michael Katz. Yeah, Katz. Yeah. He's huge. He's way bigger than all those guys. Yeah, he had such a gross face though. Yeah. I if agree. they if they did bag over the head, he wins. He would have won. Yeah. Michael Katz. What's he doing now? He was Jewish. He was like the the Jewish hope. Oh really? For, uh, yeah. Oh, for cool. bodybuilding. Whoa. Yeah. Cool. Fuck. I would have thought of that. And then after it was funny too watching that because like before no one was going to Gold's gym in LA. It was yeah. like dead and then like it looked like a prison yard. Yeah, it still does. And then afterwards, but though, it was like a cool prison yard. It blew up. Like now, obviously now, you know, you have Sam Sulek and all these people yeah. who are really, you know, launching bodybuilding yeah. like crazy. <laughs> who are these guys? The gladiators? <laughs> Shut the fuck up. When they're when they all go to the restaurant, yeah, like, of nine eggs. <laughs> yeah, so strange, so strange too. That like, how weird is it that we we see a guy like that instantly? You're like, oh, he would kick my ass, right? When that's probably not the case. Probably not. Yeah, would he have an advantage? Yes. Yeah. Right, he could probably smother you or something. Right? Well, he probably kicked my ass because we probably have the same amount of fighting uh, abilities. Right, but, but also, but someone my my that looks like me that's trained might not get his ass kicked as long as he doesn't touch you for three minutes. Yeah, really. Yeah. And after that, you got him. Yeah, he's gonna get gassed out quick. Yeah, even like a minute and a half. Yeah, a minute and a half is gonna be big time gassed out. We'll both be gassed out. Yeah, I did three one minute rounds. I was yeah. gassed out. Yeah, after the first. Oh round. yeah, it's tough. Not easy. Um, but yeah, it's weird that we see like people who are like super jacked and yeah. think, oh, they're good at fighting, right? They're like warrior. There's, there's like a DNA right into us that when we see somebody who's jacked, we think, oh, good warrior. Women think good provider because he's a warrior. You know what I mean? Like it, there's some uh, deep old, uh, yeah, generational for sure. 200,000 year old in, in your DNA type response yeah. to it. When you see somebody who's fat, they're slow. They're going to eat by a bear. Right. Do you know what I mean? Like that's. We kind yeah. of have that in us, that instinct in us to like. But, but those two people in the woods, the guy mm. with all the muscle, will yeah. survive two days. He's going to be weak after That's right. four hours without a meal. That's right. And the fat guy will live forever. Yeah, he'll just sit there and survive <laughs> for two months. Yeah. Like on alone. Yeah. They go like two months, whatever, three months without food. Oh, right. They do. The, some, of the, some of the people who make it the furthest come in fat. Yeah. And just they're like, I'm not going to do much today. I'm just going to sit here, maybe get up. Get some water and sit back down, take a nap. They're really hibernation, you know, uh, mode. By yeah. the way, hibernation, did you know that? You don't fucking sleep. Yeah, I knew that. You can't just sleep. You fucking need water and shit. Yeah, but also, like, tell us that when we're kids. Yeah, it's stupid that they don't. I feel like we all learn the same thing. Yeah. That bear sleep for fucking six months or whatever <laughs> it is, right? They don't. Yeah. They're sleepy. They're like it's it's like a sleep like state hibernation. That's what they would always tell us. But they didn't go into a like. What does that mean? Yeah. I'm like, okay, I get. Was he in a coma? No. Right? And it's like, no, no, he's getting up. Yeah. Often. Just very tired. Yeah. Just like not doing much. Doesn't want to have to go look for food. Super lazy. Just going to stick around the den. Not going to fight anything. Not going to fuck anything. Going to go right back to bed. If you're learning it for the first time here, that is kind of wild. It is wild. You see. They see, and every now and then you see videos now because now we have now we have access to the world. That's why we know this shit. So you can watch a video of a bear. He's in hibernation. He comes out. He's like all scraggly and fucked up. And he's like walks over, eats some berry off a thing, and goes right back. And you're like, 
That was his big outing. Yeah, he's like, he's hibernating. He's hungover. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, exactly. I've been there. I've, I've gotten up and just like eaten some berries and went right back to bed. <laughs> uh, should we do Bob Talk? I was just going to say oh, we're shit, at 45 yeah. minutes so we can start hitting some, so hitting some BTs. Bob Talk. Whether you're happy or you're broken, it's time to crack one open. Call it 44 Bob Talk. <laughs> Somebody <laughs> has to do it. It's going to hold out. It'll leave you hanging. All right, here we go. Quebec. Oh, God, I got to sign in again. Bob Talk. The next beer's called oh, we got La the, de, For- de Forze. I think we got like four <laughs> in today. Nice. Let's go. Oh, okay, this is uh, Nico from... Um... Somewhere near Montreal, just testing. If you get my message, uh, just tell me. I think you don't get them. <laughs> I'll try from another number, and it will still be Nico from somewhere near Montreal. Tab. I should be like along this as well. Thank you, guys. Hey, Nico, we got your message. He's got another one here. <laughs> oh, it's uh, Nico from uh, somewhere near Montreal. Um, <laughs> you don't seem to get my message from my other phone, so I'm trying on this one. If you get it, um, let me know. We got him. Hey, we got him. <laughs> How many phones has he got, this drug dealer? That's so funny. I broke my antenna. Fuck. Ohio. Broke my antenna. No, nothing. Missouri. Hey, this is Cameron from Missouri. So I was just sitting here thinking while I was at work, and I know Chris has talked about this a little bit before, but it's super crazy how, like, the listeners and myself, we sit here every week and we're listening to all the pods, and we're connected and vibing and hanging out and having a laugh, and we start to get to know you guys good, and in reality, you don't know us at all, and it's like a one-way friendship. One way friendship, and it's just super weird to think about like that. You should make a podcast. Love you guys. Thanks, buddy. Uh, they call that a parasocial relationship. Actually, that's what it's actually called. Yeah, uh, having a parasocial relationship, and and the one thing that, was that my first two girlfriends. <laughs> They're a pair of binoculars, more like it. Uh, <laughs> uh, the the one thing I will say is. Uh, if you ever feel weird about that, understand that we, as creators, we also watch podcasts and we're, we also have that same yeah. relationship with other people. And I think, point. and I think everybody does. And yeah. so there isn't like even Mr. Beast has a parasocial relationship with other people. Now, mind you, he might get to meet those people, uh, one day. Like that's just the way that his life is, but we all have that with everyone else. So you don't well, even you, feel weird because... I would feel as weird thinking about that in that way from some of my you know favorite people I watch. Yeah, you'll hear about that too. Where uh, some like A-list celebrity will be asked about, uh, oh, so what's fucking Jim Carrey like? And they'll be like, I've never even met him. Yeah, huge fan of yeah. for the thirty years, but I've actually never met the guy. Yeah, and you're like, oh, I thought you guys all hung out. Yeah. So it can happen to anybody. Of course. And it, it does happen to everybody. Is what you're yeah, saying. It absolutely does. Everybody feels the same way. That's interesting. But the the difference is, like, once again, is that, like, as a creator or as, like, if someone's, like, an actor, a popular actor, they're just going to have more chances of meeting those people yeah. and, 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 and turn that into a, a standard relationship. But Well, the other thing people might forget, too, is, like, if you're, like, a regular commenter... Mm. As the creator, you see, yeah. you might not respond because you don't have time to respond yeah. to everything, but you you start to recognize, and you and I know things about some of our screen name yep. followers stuff that because I've seen them post. Yeah, we have and a talk parasocial about. relationship, yeah. with and the, I'm like, oh, I might not answer you, but I've probably read, and I, you start to see it after a while. So it's kind of just weird in all levels. Yeah, this is a weird thing in general. Yeah, we <laughs> we stalk people too. Yeah, for sure, <laughs> we stalk people too. For sure. Yeah, I had to, I it, when I used to smoke weed, I used to like like watching Joe Rogan. And smoking weed yeah. while they were smoking weed on the show. Oh yeah, oh, yeah. something about it's that too. It felt like very uh, yeah. It was very parasocial, but yeah, I felt like I was smoking a joint with my buddies and just listening to them talk. Basically, yeah. you know, I, and I a, a lot. I mean, the audience as well. Uh, they, you literally did that when we were in Austin, even though they were talking directly to you. You forgot to respond. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> he's, he's like, I thought I was just watching a podcast. Yeah, he's like, Tony Hinchcliffe talked to me. 
So I thought this was just an episode of Kill Tony. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, that is true. And, and, and the people listening here, often a lot of our audience is not something we set out to, to do, but they, they have a drink with us. Yeah. You know, 100% which, set out. Which is why I'm thinking we should, we should put this podcast out later in the day. Why? Put up at like six at night. I like get on it early, baby. Have a get beer with us. You know? Yeah, you think so? I don't know. There's a lot of people. Our second biggest audience is UK. It's a well. That's probably why. <laughs> oh yeah. Oh, chicken and egg shit. <laughs> yeah. I see. Yeah, I put out later. It doesn't expire though. No, that's right. They can watch it whenever. Yeah, and we're we miss we miss the upload. I have seen podcast. I've seen comments like that in the past. Where people are like, why don't you put your podcast out later? I was like. <laughs> It's not. You can come back to this channel. Yeah. Why don't you just not watch it until <laughs> yeah, then? Yeah. <laughs> like, <laughs> it's like, fuck. <laughs> God. It's like your boss, like, where are you going? He's like, they fucking put a podcast up. I got to go. You got to go watch this shit. Oh, man. They would only upload later. I might have <laughs> kept my job. Yeah. Middle of my surgery. My wife wouldn't have left. Got to go. Yeah. It's like, fuck. <laughs> Doctor's like, surgery, yeah, I can't do anything. <laughs> Can't do anything. <laughs> Take my gloves off. They might do a Bob talk. You yeah. gotta run. Let's do a biopsy. <laughs> this, is my, this is my this is my doctor uh, when he's finished the biopsy. This is this is my impersonation of a doctor when he's finished a biopsy. All right, and he's going like this because the nurse is gonna take his gloves off. Yeah, that's I love that. This is it. <laughs> yeah. Oh, looks good. <laughs> it's my... it reminds me of like a kid waiting for his mom to take off his sweater or something. You're just like. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> Waiting. Yeah. That's how it works. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> just close your eyes, wait. Just fall asleep. <laughs> you ever see those videos? The kids are like, they're in the car and they're like, uh, uh, you know, there's one way you could tell if the kid's really asleep. If you lift their arm, their arm will stay up. Oh, right. And then they lift the arm and the kid's just like, <laughs> and then they drop the arm and the kid's still like this. <laughs> That's so funny. Committed to the bit, just like drooling. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so fun. Every what time if, I try that on a kid, though, people scream at me. Yeah. <laughs> get the fuck away. Yeah. He's like, no. He's like, trust me. When I'm when I get them, they're definitely sleeping. <laughs> yeah. I th- you know what I thought of the other day. <laughs> uh, this rag sounds like come. Oh, wrong rag. Who joke is that? Uh. <laughs> Gross. Yeah. Uh, I thought about it the other day was that uh, my cat jumped up on the table, and I was like, "Cat, okay, dog, n- not in your fucking life. What the fuck is wrong with you? Get off the fucking table." You. Know, that's, right? how, I, that's how I feel with the cat too. Get the fuck off the table. No, cat can what? go wherever a cat wants. We eat on yeah. that table. You don't have any animals. You have no say in this. We people, don't people yeah. have cats. No. No, cats are are like wild things. Everything is fair game. But I'm just saying, isn't it weird how we're like, cat wants to chill on the table. Cat can chill. not while you're eating. Cat would never. Sometimes it would. Fuck that cat. And then you shoot off. But I'm talking just like in the middle of the day. I whoop that cat. In the middle of the day, cat might sleep on the table. Yeah, it might happen. Dog. Fuck it up. What are you doing? If I see Fuck it, off the table. A cat on the table, I'm fucking yelling at it. Yeah, wrong audience. I should have told this to someone else. When you're gaming or playing computer, the cat walking like near the keyboard yeah. or walking in front of you. Imagine your dog getting Exa- up on the- Yeah, you're <laughs> like, what are you what doing? The fuck is going are you on? insane? Get off the fucking table. <laughs> like, yeah. But cats, we don't say a word. I just thought that was yeah. funny the other day when the like, cat jumped up. I was like, that'd be a different story if the dog. It would be a complete panic in this room. It would be yeah. absolute mayhem if the dog right now got up on the table. Okay. We'd all be like, everybody calm down. <laughs> we got to get the dog. It's going to fall. It's going to hurt itself. We gotta get the dog off the table. Dirty fucking dog. <laughs> cats just like huh. cats can make love on the table. We'd be like, nice independent ass cat. Super super cool. Hey, let him go outside alone too. You open the door, they go outside, and yeah. they'll come back. They'll tell you when they want to come back. Yeah, where the dog, you're like keeping an eye on it. Yeah, that's right. He's like, yeah, yeah. It's just funny what, what we let the cats get away with. We're kind of favorable in that way. Brother's kid put an air tag on her cat's collar. And then we watched it the other day, just like go like so far away. I'm like looking at the air tag. I'm like, what? Like, it, doesn't it come back? Like, yeah. I'm like, why do you need an air tag? I don't know. I guess just to see. I'm not sure, but like, 
Fuck, did they, they travel? Really? Yeah, I'd be curious. They, oh, yeah, that's, I mean, I was. I was surprised. I'm like, I, like, do you guys lose it? Not really, no. <laughs> okay. But, like, how far they go, it's like fucking Damn. crazy. You're like, this cat's like nine blocks away right now. Yeah. And wow, like, that's far. Yeah. You're like, is it going to come back? Yeah, it comes back every night. Like, There's a lot that can happen in nine blocks. It's so long. A lot of so cars, far. a lot of people, a lot of like, other what animals. What the fuck is this thing? Crazy life. What's it doing? So I like drug deals, probably. Oh, your light turned off. That's, you're dead now. That's why I do like um, cats uh, in terms of in terms of like how they live. I really am envious of n- no other life form except like a domesticated cat with sure. like a good life. Because like my cat's got the best life in the entire world. Yeah, he eats like a king. He tells me when he's hungry, sleeps in the bed, uh, inside when he wants, outside when he wants. Ask for the door. Yeah, let him out. I can let him in. In the summer, he'll be gone. He'll eat squirrels yeah. and birds, like fatten up, chill in the sun. <laughs> he does whatever he wants. Blood it's, drunk. It, yeah, when he gets blood drunk, <laughs> it's insane. It's uh, it's the best life. Being a cat would be the best life. I think. I'm not. I'm not necessarily a cat person, mm-hmm. but being a cat would be the best. Better than a dog. Dog, you're just in- anxious the entire time. Yeah. You're panicking. You're protecting. What was that? What was that? Mm. What was that? I'm going to try to sleep. One eye open. <laughs> what was that? You know? I feel like you're abandoned every time people go to work. Yep. You're like, oh, they're never oh, coming back. They, they like, left me for good. About me. Yeah. Every time they pet you, you're like, they're going to eat me. Yeah. yeah they're going to eat me. No, they're not eating me. <laughs> gonna, oh, they're going to eat me. No, they're not eating me. Oh, they're going to eat me. No, they're not eating me. <laughs> That's all it is. Especially chihuahuas. Say, yeah, you're like, come here. They're like, one. okay, now's the time. <laughs> it's finally time. It's finally time. You pick it up and it's like this. You just see the whites of, it eye, of its eyes. Like, you're finally going to put it in a pot and boil it and put some vegetables on it. And it's still going to be like, you know what I mean? That's for sure what they feel like. 100%. I told this to uh, Doug McKenzie, yeah. um, which is, I thought, pretty funny. Because I was like, he works with David Blaine. Yeah. And David swallows frogs yeah for a living he puts frogs in his stomach or whatever yeah and uh and i said doug i think that's fucked up and he's like no you know doug they have the best life ever he's like <laughs> he's like they have a good life he's like uh, they're living in a they have everything they've ever wanted i'm like yeah okay but imagine the trade-off is you're getting eaten once a night you're getting eaten every night by a predator every night and there's no way that that predator explains to you that you're going to be fine after. Yeah. There's no way that that ever happens that way. You have a near-death experience all the time. Every <laughs> single night. You're just like, it's happening again. It's happening again. Like, like they send you back. You're like, oh, this is nice. Oh, fuck. Yeah, time to relax. And then, like, they grab you like, oh, no. Oh, no. This is it. And then, sure enough, you, you're getting swallowed. And then, like, the frogs talking to other frogs. They're like, this ever happened to you? And, like, literally, they can talk to every frog in the world. They're like, no. Yeah, yeah. That's never happened to any of us. Yeah, they think that's life. It's just, like, <laughs> just... them getting fucking abducted, <laughs> eaten by a giant monster, regurgitated, <laughs> spit out. Oh, thank God. Put back in the thing. Maybe now I'm good. There's one guy on the planet doing this. They're the least yeah. luckiest frogs in the world. Yeah, that's right. And Doug's like, they love it. <laughs> like, Don't worry. They love it. You can tell they love it. I'm like, I'm not sure they love it. I think this is mean that we're eating the frogs because... I didn't say you're digesting them. He's eating frogs, live frogs. Yeah. Every, that's fucked up. You're eating them. Yep. They probably got a good amount of stomach acid on. I know he drinks enough water for like it to not be toxic for the, uh, the yeah. frogs. There's still probably a little bit of stomach acid mixed in with that water. That's probably yeah. not good for their sensitive, mucus-filled skin. Sure. There. Yeah. Just burn them too a bit. <sighs> True. Probably, yeah, the least of their... Like, I mean, it's be insane to be an animal being picked up by a giant predator... <laughs> teeth and everything just <laughs> oh, and you're in you're like oh, I'm fucked every yeah. single time I'm dead you fought with everything you had on the yeah. way in there's no way of explaining to that frog everything's gonna be okay yeah <laughs> there's no way you can communicate that no. thought frog's just like <laughs> that's how we thought about that with the it's not nearly as scary. They love it. Not nearly as scary for the doves that are like stuffed in your jacket or whatever. Right. Yeah. Like their heads are pinched under their wing, which makes fucking birds hypnotize and fucking go to sleep. Right. 
and they're just chilling in these little things. And then all of a sudden, with no warning, you rocket them out in front of the hey, audience. Hey, whoa. And they're like, we're fucking, baby. Yeah. We're you're fucking. Just like, whoa. <laughs> you, whoa. you think you've had a falling dream before. <laughs> <laughs> these motherfuckers are waking up in midair. Being tossed. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Let's go. In front of thousands so of funny. people with a spotlight on yeah. some yeah. Just to, And they're like, oh, this is the road to heaven. Yeah, dude. <laughs> no, it's just a theater. I'd all love right. to see a sketch. <laughs> With just like the frogs and the birds and the goldfish <laughs> of magicians, what they go through. There's a guy in Italy. He won FISM, which is the Olympics of magic. He oh, won man. one of the contests. Uh, his trick was he could um, control. Don't, no, sorry, not even control. Uh, he would he would put down like I think cards or something or whatever, and the fish would go and would grab whatever card it was or whatever the object was, it would point to it. The fish, it was a random choice. The fish. And they were so impressed. They're like, wow, we've never seen someone train a fish like that. We have no idea how that works. And he just put like magnets in the fish. <laughs> yeah, open up. Oh, <laughs> my God. Yeah. And they, they stripped his title. But that fish as well was like, oh, what's this? Oh, it tastes funny. It tastes a little like metal. And it keeps swimming, and all of a sudden, he's like, what the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, the skit would be funny. Like one of those groups, like an alcoholic anonymous group, but it's just a bunch of animals sitting just in a the room. Animals. It's like, so funny because <laughs> we're like uh, in magic. It's like, um, oh, he put a magnet inside a goldfish. Take his FISM award away. Yeah. Right? Will Smith slapped Chris Rock. It's like, oh, you can keep his Oscar. Yeah, give him the best award like, after oh. he does it. Yeah. <laughs> oh. Don't put a magnet in a fish, though. Yeah, uh, we're up want... to an hour, by the way. Fuck yeah! Uh, you guys want to do vibrates before we end? Ooh. Or are we gonna skip Ooh. it? This we can skip time? it. Yeah. Skipping it. All right, we skip it. I don't like bringing it in every week. Yeah, it's a little much. Too much. Too Stay much vibrators. It's good. Um, yeah, we got to go uh, over Stay to the Patreon for a little bit. Patreon, yeah, membership, extra episodes. Do we do any fucking empty threats before we get the fuck out of here? Off the top of the head. Yeah. Yeah, dude. I will. I will. I will tell your dentist you don't floss. I will I will take you back to the 13th century. Make you become a butter churning wench for a wealthy family that has their way with you. Well, uh that's okay. Fuck. Well, you know what they say? Yeah. Give a man a blow job. You're right, but teach a man to blow job. <laughs> yeah, we're talking. <laughs> God damn it. <laughs> These are bad. Yeah. <laughs> you lost me at Butter Turning Wench. We'll try again next week. Yep. All right. See you on the Patreon. <laughs> see you guys. Bottom of the barrel. Hey. Bottom of the barrel. Hey. Where we always hey. feel so tall.